This episode is sponsored by SoFi. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another before and after flip. We have an electrifying house for you. What am I looking at here? They're just a hot mess everywhere. It's huge, 2,400 square feet, three bed, four bath, two story. This house is definitely not to code. And what we found inside? Whoa, cobweb city back in here. Frankly, it's shocking. Oh my God, I just got dripped on. Stick around. What could go wrong? <laughs> Hey, Flipsters, I'm Lauren. And I'm Lincoln, and we are happily married. But not to each other. We're old friends from college, and we're flipping houses in the Austin, Texas area. And we're taking you along for the ride. Wow, it's a rainy day. It is a rainy day. Good thing we have this nice porch cover. I'm not sure how I feel about the columns necessarily, but I do like that it provides the shelter from the rain. I think the house looks good. You got this nice front porch. You got some bushes. You got these majestic trees out here. What's not to love about the curb appeal of this bed? And I like the rock exterior too. Got that Austin stone. Maybe not the best color scheme. Yeah, I think that could be improved. But I don't even mind the columns. I think they give it a certain charm. So let's talk more about this house before we head inside. All right, so this is a four bedroom, two and a half bath house built in 1981. It's 2,462 square feet. The house was purchased by our homemade partners, Randy and Lori for $440,000. Let's get out of the rain and into this thing. Yeah, this thing's huge. We got a lot to tour. Hey, nice change of pace. A little rain here in Austin today. We needed it, good Lord. Wait, before, before you close the door. What? I just had to comment. Just oh. a little sign. Please no soliciting except Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. I guess I, they like that popcorn and cookies. I used to be a wee below, so. Where are you now? I, yeah, I guess I'm welcome. First impressions? Oh yeah, well, here we are. I kind of had to sidestep this massive closet right in your face. It's the first thing you see when you're coming in. Yeah, not super welcoming, but then you do hit a fireplace pretty soon after. Uh, maybe seen some better days. Uh, a little worse for the wear. I think we're gonna have to clean that up, but I actually like the fireplace. I like kind of open space. What do you think? Yep. Things I don't like. Yeah, go on. Popcorn ceilings. Uh, yeah, as per usual. We need our own just like popcorn ceilings montage. I think the Boy Scouts sold a lot of popcorn here, actually. Let's see what you did there. I don't love the pink tile. It's, uh, it's had its day. This is a weird space. You've got your little writing desk built in. I'm not quite sure what you do here. You just pin letters by the fire, you know. On rainy days, journal. What would your journal say? My dearest Clara Bell, it is with a sorrowful heart that I pin you this letter. And it is with a heavy heart that I must flip this house. The rain, it shall not cease. And we have been flooded out of house and home. Flooded house? Yeah, it's called foreshadowing, Lauren. <laughs> There's a leak somewhere in this house and we gotta find it. Good thing we're here on a rainy day. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, sorry about that. I just, sometimes I get in a writing mood. Where are we? <laughs> Good question. I guess that was the living room and this is the dining room? Breakfast nook? The seeming like breakfast type area and uh, kind of a wall, not walls. There's a lot of portals around. There's plenty of house to see over here, but first we need to go on a tangent. Oh. We got some stuff over here to see. Yes, okay, back in here you got a little bit of laundry space and then, whoa cobweb city back in here. This is like a little powder bath that was. This is like an archeological dig. You can see the layers. Behind this texturing, you had originally some plant life, you know? I'm a wallpaper girl, but I like it all over the room, personally. Look at the texture on the ceiling, though. That is so swoop. They went from popcorn to caramel swirl. Very interesting. Off of this powder room, you've got storage room. What is this? Home gym? It's something. Got a little TV stand. A little I, pit. It's a pit. I think they've enclosed part of the garage to yeah, get this space. They definitely have. Okay, now normally we don't tour the garages on these things, but look at this place. This is a nice one. I like all the natural light back here. Uh-huh, you got nuts and bolts galore. Wowzers. We gotta talk about this electrical situation over here. Oh, MG. Because this is a first for me. What am I looking at here? Uh, you are looking at the way that you can use one, two, three, four, five, six, five times two, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 tools at the same time. Wow, that's how electricity works. If, as long as you just keep plugging it in, what could go wrong? 
What could go wrong? Watch out, little buddy, when you plug these in. Don't plug in too many, my friend. You got cable lines running straight into the wall, phone cords coming in and out of the wall. They're just a hot mess everywhere. Electric school dropout. Go back to high school. Yeah, this house is definitely not to code. A lot of terrifying electrical elements here in the garage. I'm hoping we can leave those behind. Let's go check out sunnier things ahead in this sunroom. <laughs> that was quite the man cave. We've made it to the ladies' den. <laughs> <laughs> a little sitting parlor, a little sunroom. Lots of light, lots of windows. We've got about as many windows. Oh my God, <laughs> continue. You ran from the six prong up to here. Look at the outlets to then run your window unit. This is not how outlets work, people. You can't just keep stacking them all on top of each other. Wow. I see something very special in the backyard that we need to discuss. Ooh, what is that? That is your very own octagonal 1970s jacuzzi hot tub. Does it work? I'm gonna go ahead and say I doubt it is operable. I don't trust anything to do with this hot tub. Maybe this is actually the hot tub plug. <laughs> It's a nice big backyard, and hey, look on the bright side, the fence is in good shape. It's great size, obviously needs some upkeep, but it's for backyards that we deal with, it ain't bad. Let's take a look at the kitchen. <laughs> Retro. Oh my God, well. This ain't good. Oh my God, I just got dripped on. <laughs> We are on the ground floor, so that means this is leaking through the entire house. This is a problem. This is a big problem. Well, I'm sort of glad we came on a rainy day because <laughs> at least we know what we're dealing with. It's quite cozy. <laughs> it's a little claustrophobic. Yeah, I'm, I'm wishing we had a little bit more headroom. This kitchen has everything. You got the low <laughs> ceiling, you got the leak, you got the dim lighting. It's very dungeon-esque. I think we're in a cave. You could stick your head out this window though. Uh, yeah, it's it's something. Moving on here, have you ever done one of those ink blot things where it's like, what do you see? A Rorschach test? Yeah, what do you see in this ink blot? You know, it sort of resembles a button below a YouTube video, like a, a subscribe button. Oh, the play button, yes. it is. Go ahead and hit that, people. We got some roofs to repair, some drywall to fix. This is a hot mess. We're gonna have to go upstairs and see if we can pinpoint where it's actually coming from. Yeah, be careful, because it's coming through the light right there. Yeah, that's not great. I'm gonna turn that off. This yeah. is an accident waiting to happen. Okay, moving on. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> some of our biggest Austin Flipster fans are here. <laughs> All five of them in one room together. Wow. I was going to say, that doesn't look like your mom. <laughs> <laughs> or your mom. Oh, uh, more water. Oh, uh, you know I love a good patriotic fan pool. Texas. Oh my God, this one's dripping too. I know, that's what I'm saying. Holy sh yeah, I think this is one of the craziest electrical hazard houses we've ever been in. Oh my gosh, this is a hazard. And people, please, water and electricity do not mix. So please never touch any wet electrical items. This is your PSA. If you've gone this far in life and not known that, now you know. This is a big problem, you guys. Oh my goodness. Are we still under option on this thing? <laughs> Interesting wallpaper situation going on in here. Yes, it's giving me 90s vibes. Is that kind of a border around the window? That's fancy. Oh, wow. They were definitely in the middle of some sort of renovation. Yeah. Not sure how far they got. Didn't start with the carpets. We didn't even talk about the carpets. That's how crazy this house is. Yeah. These carpets are blue, people. It's a Smurf blue carpet. And it's like number 99 on the things that I would improve about this house. Yeah, also there's no lighting in this entire space. This is a huge room. I actually feel safer in here than anywhere else at the moment. If you feel safe in here, you're gonna feel really safe <laughs> in here. Ooh. Oh my god. Okay, cool. And then also you just got a countertop, big old granite countertop here. Too bad it's out of style. Mm. We could use that. I think they knew that, maybe. All right, let's cautiously move upstairs because I'm not sure what we're gonna find up there. After you. So up the top of the stairs looks like you've got what was a bathroom. Yeah, and I think I know where our roof leak is coming from. Yikes. Definitely this side of the house. That's a big yikes. A lot of space up here though, I will say that. Let's let's find some positives On here. On the positive, oh it's my a big God. house. Okay, well it looks like maybe where our leak is coming from, that looks like it's sagging. Well then I think we've got multiple leaks. Okay. Nice big room though. <laughs> it is nice and big. Hey, at least they got the carpet out before it got ruined. Demo's half done. Okay, so moving to the second secondary bedroom. Again, nice size, 
no water damage that I can see. Okay. It's looking, Positive. Looking better on this side, at least. Good size closet off this room. Except, oh my gosh, we've got a big problem. Look at this wallpaper border. <laughs> That is hideous. <laughs> that is fixable easily, <laughs> but it is, you're right. All right, let's see this other bedroom. Okay, I think this is the cleanest one yet. What do you think? Yep, winner, winner. Maybe have to ditch some shelves and don't know that I'm feeling the mirrored closet door. Yeah, that seems to be an addition. Oh, wait a minute. Now we got another random wire sticking out of the wall. That's so close. At least this fan's not dripping. That's a start. Positive. Oh. Move in the right direction. All right, let's go see the last room, the primary suite. Okay, wow. This is huge. This is really big for a house this age. Not bad. Yeah, they're living large. Well, now I do have some more water up here. It looks like it's oh. coming right down the center of the house. I found where our leak is. This seems to be the biggest pool of water right here. And then it looks like it's almost sloping down into this bathroom or coming down through these walls. It's kind of actually hard to tell where it's yeah, even coming this, from. Look at this cracks forming right here. Oh man, look at this rad wallpaper in here too. Cool. All right, at this point, I gotta get up in that attic and see what's going on. Oh goodness. Let's see what we're dealing with. If I don't kill myself on this ladder. I'm not going up there. <laughs> really dark up there, hard to tell exactly where that leak might be coming from. So it looks like the leak is coming from back behind me. But I did find some Civil War memorabilia up there, so. I think we found our angle for this episode. Did you see Chevy Chase in like a winter hat? Yeah, there's definitely an attic up here. Yeah, he, he was locked up there. Well, we are definitely gonna need to update our budget to include a new roof. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm really excited about all the space and opportunities to improve, but this has me Pretty nervous. We are looking at at least a full electrical rewiring on this thing. I don't trust anything I see in here electrical wise. And obviously the roof, major area for concern. I just hope it hasn't done too much damage behind the walls. Okay, so we flipped like what? hundred houses? Millions, Lauren. <laughs> it's been millions. <laughs> it's at least a hundred plus one. Sure, I'll give you that. And I think the biggest lesson we learned is which mortgage lenders to work with and which ones to stay far, far away from. We've had big banks be so slow and tedious to work with. And then there's other online lenders that's like, there's no humans there. I'm talking to a chat bot and not even a good one. I've been hearing SoFi's name come up more and more in this space. And we're happy to show you how they can be a great partner in your home buying journey. They're not only sponsoring this video, they are turning heads in the mortgage industry. In the face of rising interest rates, they offer competitive rates. And also offer special pricing on their 30-year conforming mortgages. SoFi is an award-winning mortgage lender. You've never won an award. <laughs> <laughs> not a mortgage no, no, Maybe Have you not ever won a mortgage a lending award? Yeah, no. exactly. Have, what awards have you won? Most improved. Oh, most improved. <laughs> most improved. <laughs> that just means you were terrible to start. Have you won CNBC Select's award for the best overall mortgage lender for saving money? I have not. They're not only saving you money, they're modernizing the whole way that people get mortgages. You can see your rates online in minutes, but you have that dedicated one-on-one -on -one support. Their dedicated mortgage loan officers will guide you through the process from start to finish. These people are dedicated. So if you're in the home buying process, or even if you're just looking for a cash out refi for home improvements, go view your rate at SoFi.com slash Austin Flipsters. With no commitment and no impact to your credit score. That link will be at the top of the description box, or you can scan the QR code here. I would say this is one of our most improved ad reads, <laughs> Lauren. I'm proud of you. <laughs> All right, so working on the design plan for Randy and Lori's house. Now I did do this 3D render so that they can get a really good idea of how the space is gonna look once we're all done. And I thought you guys might wanna check it out as well. So starting off, we are in that living room. As you'll notice, we are going to open this space up. We're gonna remove the wall that's over here and really give it sort of an open concept feel. We are gonna keep the fireplace that same stone. It's in great shape. And so we're going to just do things around it to accent it and make it a design feature rather than an eyesore. So let's move over first thing into the kitchen. Now I'm super Super excited about this space. As you'll remember, currently those ceilings are super low, so we are going to elevate those, open it up, and we are gonna keep sort of the orientation basically the same, but run cabinetry to the ceiling. That will make the space feel much larger. For the backsplash, I'm really excited about this tile. It's really, really pretty. It's got sort of a handmade look, and it's got a light blue kind of iridescent feel to it, and I think it's going to really freshen up the space. We're gonna pair that with white cabinets, fresh white quartz counters, and we're actually going with chrome for the hardware in this house. A little bit different look than we normally do. 
So moving down the hall, we do have a nice powder room in this house, and I always love a powder room because because of the small size of them, you can go a little bit bolder with the design. It's not gonna be too overwhelming. I've picked this really fun tile for the floor in here, again, with the blue tones that you'll see throughout the house. Moving over to what is currently the enclosed patio, we are gonna finish out this space and make it a proper room. It's gonna be like a sunroom extra living space. We're doing that with windows throughout, new fan, fresh paint. I think this is gonna be a really nice space. And bonus points, you're not looking at a janky hot tub anymore. So moving back through the kitchen, you do have this nice dining space off of the kitchen. You know, formal dining, some people take it or leave it, but I think it is a nice feature to have. Right off the dining room, we also have this formal living space. So, you know, the layout is not exactly modern, but I think it is sort of nice sometimes to have some separation of your spaces. So the great thing about this house is there's a ton of square footage and a lot of room. So let's go check those out upstairs. So there's three additional bedrooms up here, which is great because there's tons of space in this house. For those bedrooms, we're gonna keep them all very simple. We're just looking at new floors, fresh paint, new light fixtures. We are gonna add can lights and replace the windows. So those three bedrooms share this one bathroom off the hallway. It's a pretty good substantial size. So we're just gonna freshen it up with some nice clean materials. We're going with a large format faux marble on the shower. And then we're doing faux marble in a hexagon pattern on the floor. I think it's fun, clean, fresh, and modern, which is the vibe we're going for in this whole house. All right, let's move over to the primary bedroom because as you know, that is going to be one of the selling features of this house. And this bedroom is enormous. It is huge. We're keeping it fresh and clean. It's going to match the rest of the bedrooms. We are running engineered hardwood floors throughout even in the bedrooms. Some of our projects we do carpet, but for a house this size in this part of town, we really need to upgrade. Moving over to the primary bathroom, one huge upgrade is there's no more leak in the ceiling, so that will be great. Uh, the water will come from your shower head and not from your roof, which is, you know, ideal. In here, we're mixing it up a little bit. We went with this fun picket fence tile in the shower, running it vertical. I think it just adds a little bit of interest. We are doing penny tile on a floor and keeping the same faux marble floors that we did in the hall bath. Again, with all the fixtures and hardware in this house, we are going with that chrome, really fresh, clean look. So now that y'all have seen the plan, it is time to get to work. Let's cue that demo montage. Okay, so demo has clearly happened. Yes, we got all this busted up tile. It we is... haven't gotten to the removing of the debris part yet, <laughs> I guess. Well, we've already filled up one dumpster. It's outside, so we've got a little bit more actual cleanup to do after we haul that. Ripping up this tile is always a challenge because it is glued down good, and we're gonna put wood floors on top of it. There's a lot of self-leveling that has to happen once you rip up tile, but I think it's gonna be worth it. Well, and it hasn't been all work and no play here. This fan looks like it's been a Mardi Gras. Wow, yeah, it was really living its best life when they were scraping the ceilings and getting its Mardi Gras on, huh? Speaking of ceilings, let's talk about the ceiling in the kitchen. Yeah, now we are gonna have to get creative. This is one of the areas we were a little concerned about was how we were gonna pop up this drop ceiling, and now that we've got all the sheetrock off, we've kind of got some not great options. Yeah, I'm not sure the juice is gonna be worth the squeeze on this one. Obviously, from a design perspective, the taller the ceilings, the better. We do have a lot of plumbing and a lot of HVAC systems that are running right here at this top of where the ceiling used to be, so we may not have a ton of room to work with without a major expense. Yeah, I'm hoping the best we could do would be to fur down on top of the cabinet so that just the ceiling drops over the cabinets on both sides. So it's gonna take some work just to reconfigure and pop up this middle. I think it's a decent compromise and we gotta make it work. All right, so speaking of reframing, we still have a little bit of work to do to open this space up to your dining room a little bit more, but I think this space is gonna be awesome. Yeah, now that we've got that exterior siding off the walls, it feels like it could maybe be an interior space versus just the converted patio that it was. So I think it's gonna feel a whole lot more homey in here. Yep, gonna get a ton of living space, which is always a plus. And we are losing some living space, but I think in a good way in this garage. Normally wouldn't show you guys the garage, but it's a big difference in here. Okay, so check this out. We've deleted a room. Yes, and I, I think it's addition by subtraction again on this one. We've restored it back to a two car garage, which is gonna be huge. This is an enormous house. It's gonna be a family home. Having a lot of primo parking will be ideal. And also you have this extra space over here right. for a tool closet or area. So I'm not really sure why they cannibalized this in the first place, but we're restoring it back to its former glory. Yeah, you know, sometimes we're converting the garage. Sometimes we're deconverting it. It's just, you never, <laughs> you never know what to expect. You gotta subscribe to the channel. All right, a little bit more demo upstairs. Let's check on that. And then let's make sure we got a game plan going forward. Up here in your primary suite, we have ripped out all the bathroom stuff. We've got a blank slate. 
<laughs> that we do. So we were able to find the source of the leak. It was an issue with the flashing on a fixture on the roof. Luckily, we were able to address it right there and not have to re-roof this entire thing. Great news in this room is we pinpointed the leak, which was above us on the roof. It rained yesterday, minimal damage. It didn't really soak or rot. So I don't think it was going on that long. Okay, so now that we have the leak fixed, it's time for the fun stuff. Let's get to work making this bathroom pretty. So we are working with some homemade partners on this flip. They're actually based in Seattle and they wanted some exposure to the Austin market. So this is perfect. I'm Lori. And I'm Randy. Uh, we live in Seattle, Washington. Probably a year, a little over a year ago, saw a post about Austin Flipsters and their partner program. Reached out to them based on that, started talking to Joe, and uh, one thing led to another and here we are functioning partners. So since they live in Seattle, I really want to get this thing moving so that when they come and see it, we've made a lot of progress. things first. I'm loving the fresh coat of paint on the exterior. Yeah, I'm loving the little blue on the shutters. It looks really good. We did the front door to match. It's a sophisticated palette. Let's get inside because this thing's starting to take shape. Okay, so it looks a little different than the last time we were here. I think this is actually going to be the biggest value add thing that we do to this whole house. We are in what was the kitchen and will be again soon. <laughs> it feels a lot less claustrophobic in here and we're not being rained on. Yeah. So that's an improvement. That is a major improvement. Okay, so we worked with what we had here. So we got as much space in the middle of the kitchen as we could. We had to leave these fur downs on the edges, right? Because We've got plumbing from the bathrooms above us that's still running through this. So we did our best to bring it up as much as we can and then kick it out to the wall. You can see up under here how we had to rear out the plumbing lines down the wall. So I think by the time you run cabinets right up against this, it's gonna feel like the whole kitchen is the same height as the whole rest of the house. I think it looks great. We had to reroute the gas line as well down on this side of the wall, which is why we've got a fur down here. So working with what we got, but it's really coming together. And we've made progress upstairs as well. Got our new tub in. We are getting ready for tile on the floor. We've got it here. It's this nice marble pattern. We got the uh, shower walls nice and waterproof. Same over on the primary bathroom. A lot happening there. It's so over in the primary suite. We're doing the same thing in this bathroom. Go ahead and waterproof it. We did take out the tub and just made this a nice big shower, which I think will be a major upgrade. So a lot taking place. We're starting to get floors down. Our crews are humming and singing on this thing. It's going to go quick. So as we mentioned before, our out of town homemade partners, Randy and Lori are in town from Seattle to tour the house. It's about 85% done, so we're not all the way there, but I'm excited for them to see the progress we've made. It was their first time seeing the living room without that awkward wall. So originally we had a whole wall going right here, okay. cutting off this breakfast nookie area and your kitchen, your kitchen was really tucked back up in here. Okay. That opens it up and makes this sort of more functional, more modern. Yeah. The garage we opened up to actually fit two cars. This is such a different, space than what it was. Yeah, it's um, so much more functional. The weird back porch area was integrated into the house. Yeah, there's this is nice. There's a lot of options for this space. The new height of the kitchen ceilings. The entire ceiling was at this height for oh, the whole wow. kitchen. It really felt cramped. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. And a lot of the tile choices and design finishing touches that we don't want to spoil just yet. The big reveal is coming soon, people. But the real question is, Randy and Lori are experienced real estate investors. This is not their first flip, so I'm really curious to see what they think. Don't ask me. I want to hear it from them. Living in Seattle, we didn't come down and do an initial walkthrough. We haven't been in and out throughout the process, so this is our first visit, first time to see it. There's been a lot of communication, a lot of pictures, so had a good sense of what we'd be walking into. Did you see the electrical pictures from the before. Yeah, they were a little, a little, scary. A little They were dicey for sure. Just finished doing the walkthrough. It's it's coming along great. It looks really good. Um, the flow is solid. The room sizes are good. This is great space for a bedroom. Like the finishes, like the millwork choices. And the backsplash tile turned out nice. Yeah, it did. Who gets to pick all of the... That'd be me. <laughs> it's a great looking house. If we live closer, we might live in it. <laughs> yeah, y'all like it? I do. Yeah, I do. Good, great. I do. Um, that's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the vibe, the color choices and the tile choices. It all feels good. Yeah, so we don't always get to see our out-of-town partners in person, so it was super cool of Randy and Lori to come down, meet them in person, and get to hang out a little bit. 
And don't forget, if you're interested in flipping a house, whether you're as experienced as Randy and Lori, or this would be your very first house to flip, go ahead, head to the link in our description, go to our new website, Homemade. There you can apply to be a partner and flip a house with us. All right, y'all, speaking of transformations, it is finally time for the big reveal. Are you ready for it? In three, two, one. It was raining the day that we first saw this thing, so it's only appropriate that it's raining again. A little soggy, we're gonna have to get in quick, but first let's talk about the outside of this thing. Look at here. I love the curb appeal of this house. It always had good bones, but I think we freshened it up with some new paint, some light fixtures, and a bright blue door. Who doesn't love a blue door? It's so inviting. You got blue doors, you got blue shutters, you got blue garage doors. I think it really works with the snow and the white and the columns. Give it that stately feel. Very regal. So regal. This is one of the larger houses in the neighborhood, so it feels a little bigger, a little grander. Love the front yard. We renovated during winter, so the spring grass really hasn't come in, but it's gonna look so lush and beautiful once the trees got their leaves. We did have to, <laughs> unfortunately, chop some of those limbs off. Crazy ice damage, but now it's nice and cleaned up. I think it's got massive curb appeal. Roof is looking good, and more importantly, it's working. <laughs> I don't think it's raining inside. This is gonna be the moment of truth to see. <laughs> We've got rain today. Let's see if we got rain inside as well. Fabuloso. Wow, look at this place. Great, right? She cleans up good. <laughs> Biggest thing we did here was update the layout. Yes, removing the little riding nook, you know, <laughs> you're riding to your kinfolk. No more, you've got nice open space. You gotta send them a text at this point. Hit them up on Snap at least. <laughs> I think the living room turned out great. Nice, open and airy. Opening up this space, it brings it into the 21st century. Totally. We did keep the fireplace original. It's Austin stone, which we like, but everything else is basically new. We got new can lights, new fan. Not only did taking out this wall really open open up your living room, it actually delivered a lot more access to sort of these bonus areas off of the living area. You've got this bonus room that we'll peek our heads in, in a second, but also back here, you've got now a functional powder room. Let's go check that out. So we don't typically have powder rooms in the projects we work on, so I'm always excited when I get to work on one. It's a space where you can go a little bit funkier and it's totally accepted. In this case, we funked it up with the tile on the floor, uh, which I love in a nice bold pattern. Again, a little nod to blue, which we're doing throughout this house. Otherwise, we kept it very simple with the white cabinets, the white quartz counters, and the brush nickel accessories. And I think it's just a nice, clean, fun space, and it's nice to have. Okay, normally we don't talk about garages, they're just bedrooms for cars, but I gotta show you this. I think we added value because we got rid of this old canning weird bonus area and reclaimed it for a full two car garage. I think that's a lot more functional to a buyer, especially for a house this size, you're gonna want two cars in your garage. So the other big upgrade from this layout change is now you've got, I think a really functioning space back here from this enclosed porch. Previously it felt like a porch and now it feels like a room. Mostly it was the siding on the walls. <laughs> Swap that out for drywall. We've got HVAC running back here to cool it down. Hand lights, you know, the modern necessities. <laughs> Electricity and air conditioning. I think this has a lot of function. This could be an office, this could be workout, this could be like playroom, second living, whatever. So many things, so we I could, need four of them. I could go on. One is not enough, Stream, what else? Streaming room. Canning room. Movie theater. Crochet. That's. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but in all seriousness, we didn't throw these French doors on here, which would give you a bit of privacy, no matter what you're doing in this room, right? Yeah, I love the little bonus space. Access to the backyard, which we just freshened up with a little bit of landscaping. And most importantly, we removed that 1970s hot tub. Hot tub time machine, gone. <laughs> gone. Speaking of bringing things in 2023, let's go check out that kitchen. Yes. <laughs> So with the layout changes, now your kitchen is easily accessible to all your living spaces. I think we packed a punch in this kitchen because it was tucked back up in here. We didn't have a whole lot of space to really blow it up big. I think we made the most of it. Did freshen it up with some white cabinetry. Now I am digging the backsplash. It looks good. We did touches of blue throughout this house and I think it really works. I'm loving the color of this. 
kind of a pale sky blue. It's kind of got like French country kitchen vibes, that pale blue uh -oh. and white. Yeah, there you go. I want a croissant now. <laughs> Swap down the window in here. It had that, that dated garden window, a more traditional two pane window. And you'll notice above me, huh? Staying dry in the kitchen now. Yeah, most importantly, the only blue is coming from the tile and not the rain. <laughs> We did go with these clear acrylic knobs, which is just a little mod touch. I think they look good. The traditional brushed nickel fixtures throughout. We are out kind of in the burbs. This is a more traditional house designing to the taste of the folks out here. A little less funky, fresh Austin, a little more big traditional house. Yep, which is why we went white shaker and white quartz, which is a classic. And also you have a nice formal dining room right off your kitchen. That's right. You're serving it up hot and fresh and you don't have to go far to your lovely dining space. This is the perfect size for a dining room. Can I say not too big, not too small, just right. I think you've got options. This could be a little bonus space and we've got a bigger sort of second living area we should go check out because I think it's multi-purpose. So this is what the 1970s called a formal living room. This is like a sitting parlor. We come across these often. And this is one of the constraints of this layout. It's like this big circle built around your stairs in the middle. So you end up having sort of like double living. Is it hers living? Yeah. <laughs> Smoking parlor. Maybe they were onto something. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to be honest. <laughs> Now we didn't stage this, left it sort of blank canvas so you could reimagine it. Like I said, this could be a more formal big dining space, a formal sitting. There's a lot you can do over here and it's a little tucked away from the rest of the living space, which is nice. Let's talk about the stair railing because it's kind of a unique design. Yeah, I think it's nice and clean and simple, high contrast. You got these metal balusters, banisters, balusters. Whatever. Whatever they're called. And I think they look good. They look sharp, add a little bit of interest. And I think we made the most of it. Agreed. Let's head on upstairs and check out this bedroom. Are these functioning stairs? Wow. <laughs> okay, so heading upstairs, first thing we have up here is a Jack and Jill bath for the three secondary bedrooms. Yes, and this is where all the problems started with the leak. It was coming straight down <laughs> through this bathroom. Yes. I and block that memory, but you're right. And now you can still take a leak in here, but the good kind. Gross. So let's <laughs> talk about the tile in here. Uh, Cause we went with a large format marble looking tile for the shower. I think it's classy. I think it works with hex on the floor. Ooh, nice. But I think this is a nice clean functioning bathroom. Traditional vibes all around really work for this house. Agreed. Now we do have a ton of space up here. Let's go check out those bedrooms. Yes. For these upstairs bedrooms, really freshened them up, ran the hardwoods throughout, which is a nice touch. Classy. So We're classy, classy like that. New windows to the exterior and just can lights and the fan give it the normal treatment. Simple. And the other two bedrooms match the vibes. Yep. Totally rinse and repeat up here. And these other spare bedrooms are a great size for a house this age. They even have walk-in closets, which is a nice bonus. As usual, you don't want to break the budget on these spare bedrooms because that's not where the money is. Nope. Where the money is, is in the primary suite. Look at this room. It is enormous. There's so much to see. It is humongous. For a house this age, you just don't see this anymore. No, this will be a selling feature for sure when we go to list this house. So not only do you have a ton of space in this room, you actually have two closets. Yeah, boom, two walk-in closets. And then that way, you you know, you can keep your clothes separate. You're not always getting confused as to whose is whose. Yeah, exactly. Totally. <laughs> All right, let's go check out the other one because we did carve it off this bathroom space. Okay, so the other closet is off of your primary bathroom right here, and it's actually a very good size, so I'm climbing this one. Okay, <laughs> it's all yours. Let's talk about the bathroom itself, though, because it's looking good. Yep, we went with the same white cabinets, white quartz as downstairs. We did do the same acrylic handles up here, which I think are fun. Arch mirrors. Oh my gosh! Look at us, classy. Wow, loving the arch mirrors, loving the double vanity. It's kind of a long, thin bathroom, and I think it makes the most of the space. Totally. We did play with some fun um, shapes on our tile selection as well. And you've got that picket hex tile in the shower, girl. Not just picket hex, jumbo picket hex. Jumbo picket hex. I think it's fun. It's it's a, it's unexpected, right? No, I totally saw this coming. <laughs> Large hex on the floor, small hex in the shower. <laughs> What's not to love? All right, that house is wrapped. We got to get it on the market ASAP. We need to go talk numbers on it. Let's do it. As you guys may know, this past year has been very tough for the real estate market and prices have actually declined. So our partners purchased the house for $440,000. 
They're all in remodeling and holding costs were $180,000 for a total investment in the property of $620,000. The property ended up selling for $665,000. And after $27,000 in closing costs, that left them a gross profit of $18,000. Okay, so I'm gonna say this transformation was electrifying. I think it was very powerful. <laughs> Make sure you guys subscribe. We've got more content coming your way. Stick around. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.